Brothers and sisters, we gather here today on Art of the Flip for me to confess my automotive sins I have committed upon this vehicle. I will show you the heart of the beast. Dude. What are you doing? Repent! Ah! So if you guys watched our last episode where we worked on this 2011 Mini Cooper S, it's actually Andrew's car. We did a lot of work to the exterior of this car. We changed out those nasty aftermarket headlights to this nice stock looking configuration. Then we did the hood scoop. We also took off some of the vinyl accents and we also changed out the hook, the, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, uh, it's called a tow hook, Freddie. Tow hook. So look, that, mm -hmm. that, that thing. I never use them because my cars never break down. Can I tell you something? You are a terrible liar. Today, we're getting our hands dirty. Well, Freddie, are you gonna do anything or am I gonna? It's all you, bro. Thanks. Uh, we're gonna replace this downpipe with a stock one. Uh, I'm sure you heard last episode that this car is not quiet. You do not sneak out at midnight from your parents' house to go hang out with your bros in this thing. The downpipe's gonna be pretty easy. It's three bolts up top, a few bolts down below, uh, and then a V-band clamp that it, uh, can, can get, uh, can connect it to the rest of the exhaust. Uh, so that'll be easy. Uh, and then the rest of the exhaust is just one giant piece. Uh, we can just drop right out of there and it's gone. And we put a, we got a stock one and it's, it's gonna be a lot better. It'll be, it'll be quiet. So as you can see, the exhaust in the bottom is the one we took off the car. Notice the distinct lack of anything that makes the car quiet, because loud is good, right? Loud is not good, and right here you can see the resonator and another resonator, and I'm just going to call everything that looks kind of coffee I think -ish. that is the cat. That's the cat. I'm pretty sure that's the cat. So that's the cat, and that's the cat. That, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, tw it's a it, we have twins. It's a twins. Twin, twin, twin cat. Twin cats, okay, so Wonder that's twins. the cat, it has been decatted. This is a resonator, has been de-resonated, resonated, and at the back it has been de-muffled. Unmuffled. De-muffled. Unmuffled. Non-muffled. X-muffled. <laughs> it is an X-muffler! <laughs> but here's the thing though. The tips are way nicer on my exhaust than the stock exhaust. They are, but you can't drive the car with this exhaust and expect to sell it. So. What we're going to do is we're just going to put this guy back on with the cats and it's going to make everything nice and happy as far as the ECU and also mother nature because uh, you don't, you don't want to be riding with this, you're riding dirty. So uh, we're just going to put on this thing and hopefully it'll be a lot quieter and uh, it's not going to be ear piercingly loud and annoying and all that stuff. You know how sometimes when you're writing an essay and you want to use as many words as possible? Yeah. That's what just happened. You know. You know if you're trying to buy time and your brain can't come up with the words? Yeah. That's what just happened. Dude, what is this? What is, what is that thing right there? Oh, uh, so what I did is I made a really large batch of metal macaroni and cheese and I had a couple of elbows left so I decided what I would do is I would tack two of them on here to uh, space the O2 sensor to maybe give it a chance uh, so it didn't foul out. Um, okay, so this this is what is known as a uh, non-fouler, but usually you're supposed to put one on here and you put two for some reason. For extra... It looks like plumbing parts, dude. Like, that's that's exactly what it looks like. And, okay, this is this is not good. The O2 sensor basically fell out. So, really? Yeah, it just like fell out, so that could have been a... Is that bad? That's... It's not good. It's uh. not good. You don't want tolerances in your O2 sensor. But uh, it's a good thing we're getting rid of this thing even though, I mean, it does look pretty cool. This probably gives a little bit more power, but uh, it's a good thing we're getting rid of this thing. So, this is bad, dude, this is real bad. This engine bay is looking pretty rough. Look, um, I haven't been entirely forthright with you. There's another part on this car that I may have forgotten to mention. What? I, I put an aftermarket blow-off valve on this car. Okay. 
Can we fix that? You can fix it. Okay. Here. Oh, thanks, man. Is this a stock diverter valve? It is. It is a stock diverter valve, and you're going to install it. Perfect. So, to get to the blow-off valve, we got a few things to remove, and by a few things, I mean um, a few things. Uh, we got to get this moved out of the way. We got to get this coolant tank out of the way. Um, and we got to get, what is this called? This guy right here? That is the uh, intake hose. That's what I said. Um, that's got to move, uh, because the blow-off valve is like way it's, it's just, it's right here. It's just kind of hard to get to. You want to, you want to take this off? Hey, um, how about I do my job and you do yours? But this is, thank you. Job. Thank you. I released the, yep. So it's right there. Okay. That's not too hard to get to. What do you have to do? Uh, we got to move this coolant tank here. This one? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. I'm just gonna. Hey, look at look at this professional on the fly studio lighting. It's like we're professionals. Or we're not professionals. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. You just gotta, you just kinda gotta, you just gotta kinda, there it is. All right, so I had to get Papa Taft to help me out here because your boy was just, I was confused. Yeah, uh, it's a five millimeter and you just needed to uh, get a little bit more purchase on it because- uh, I've already purchased it. You've already purchased it, that's, that's, that's true, but in order to get the bolt loose, you just gotta give it some, uh, some, some beans. Crispa? Some beans. Come on, where, where are those beans at, dog? Uh, I think I ate them. Where are those beans at? There, there we go. Please don't break anything. Uh, Mini is not very... Uh, kind to people with larger than hands of no, a child? No, it's not even larger. It's just any any sort of hands. It, it Mini, <laughs> Mini, unkind to people with hands. Yeah. How are you supposed to do this? It's like It makes no sense. Well, I did it before, so if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Okay. There she goes. Right. That's number three. I have no idea how I'm gonna get that one on. Look, you got a little, a little smoke from me cracking it. Can you give me um, pliers. That's gonna take you nine years to find pliers. It's okay, I don't need them anymore. It's okay, I don't need them anymore. Cut it off. Thank you, though. So here is a stock diverter valve. Diverter valve? Diverter. I still can't say it right. Uh, so stock diverter valve and stock uh, forge performance? It's uh, not stock. Well, okay, not, not stock. I've been inhaling a lot of fumes today. Um, so it just goes like this, and then you have a little connector here, and that connects into one of something in here, one of the multitude of connectors. And uh, this just diverts all the air back into the intake stream, and this diverts it to the atmosphere, and you get that nice sound. Uh, and we're not gonna be using that because we wanna sell this car, and this is also, uh, well, it might not be legal everywhere, Actually, it might. It should be legal, right? We don't live in Australia. Pfft, no idea. In any case, this has to go. This is going in, and hopefully, I can get this in without too much cursing. Uh, Andrew apparently didn't remember how this all went on, and we had to trace everything back. And apparently, there's a little uh, solenoid here that you have to take off because that is what gives the vacuum to the diverter valve. So we just have to take that off. It's a uh, 10 mil right up here. And then there's a little bit of wiring work, but it's just literally uh, just this guy right here. Yeah, it's kind of a mess. It's a little bit of a mess. But uh, what's cool about these plugs is a lot of people think you have to take them out. Uh, no, you have to push them in. So you push them in like that and they come right out. That's a lot easier than uh, some people thinking that you have to uh, 
take them out. Isn't that right, Andrew? What? Anyway, so we take this off. This goes somewhere. All right. So all that vacuum stuff gets deleted. Yeah, it does, but uh, there's a, let's see. The vacuum line in here that we can just, because this is teed off, so what we can do is we can just run this guy. Yeah, run that down there. Okay, so this, this all goes away. This all gets deleted. We'll put that to the side. This we'll put in the stock location. And this is also deleted, I believe. Because this is a harness that goes onto the blow-off valve itself, or diverter valve, sorry. Um, and of course it's putting up a little bit of a fight. That, so this gets also put to the side. Connect this guy. Okay, so that is stock. Hey, make sure you're installing that with the uh, plug facing downwards. The, the harness, but you don't have it facing downwards, do you? You're kidding. Hey, you know what? Let's use the magic of editing. Are you ready? Get ready, Freddy. Here we go. Three, two, and we're done. Thanks, man. You did a great job. Look at that. Yeah, so we got the new diverter valve in. We got the intake piping all cinched up. And now what we have to do is we have to put on that stock exhaust and then we can start to work on the suspension. This is actually a pretty long day. Oh, hey, what's up? Hi. Okay, so I am underneath the car and I am going to put in the downpipe and there's gonna be a little, little lack of space here just because there, now there's a catalytic converter where there used to be none. But I think I can get it on there. I think I can get it on there. I think I can get it on there. Uh, a little help. You, you got it. That engine bay is looking pretty stock, man. It is looking pretty stock. Not we bad. finished everything in the engine bay. Other than this, just don't, don't look at that. So we got the diverter valve. We got that all cinched down. We got the uh, stock downpipe with the cat. It's, it's weird. I have to think about it because I've never actually put stock downpipes back on a car. But we did it. You know what? You're welcome for the experience. You're welcome for the work. Because <laughs> uh, we got the heat shielding on. Now it's looking a lot more stock. All we have to do is connect this O2 sensor. We'll just put that guy right here. And this goes in here like so. Then we just put this cover on. And that looks real nice. But what we have to do right now is we have to put on the exhaust. And I'm gonna issue myself a little bit of a challenge. I'm gonna see if I can do this in five minutes. You think I can do it in five minutes? <sighs> um, Not necessarily get the thing bolted on, but uh, just in all the hangers. Uh, put the exhaust in the hangers and it'll, it'll just be in its spot. You think I could get that done in five minutes? Let's find out. Okay, Andrew, do you have the stopwatch ready? I have the stopwatch ready. Okay, we're gonna see if we can put in a mini exhaust system in five minutes. Let me know when. Three, two, one, go. I think it's upside down. Thirty seconds on the left. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Look. Plenty of time. One minute, 15 seconds. Done. Really? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah, that's, that, was, that was actually easier than I thought. Okay. All right, so that was like a minute, 15, minute 20-ish. I think that I, I gave myself a little too much time. Yeah, I think you did too. Uh, yeah, uh, so I didn't bolt the thing down to the uh, downpipe, but uh, it is in its home right now, so it's not moving. Uh, all we have to do is do up that one bolt, and then uh, we move on to the suspension. So 
This car is not actually that hard to work on. There is a lot of fiddly bits in the engine bay, but other than that, it's actually pretty easy. All right, dude, let's hear this thing. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah I'm actually kind of excited. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I am I am pumped to hear what a, a stock Mini Cooper sounds like. Are you pumped? Yeah, well, uh, uh, let's, let's not get that. Frederick, are you pumped? Uh, uh, kind of scared. Sketchy, getting in a car on jack stands. Are you wearing a different shirt? No. Okay, okay, all right. That is pretty quiet, actually. That's really quiet. And that's a cold start. That's the loudest it's gonna get. That is not bad at all. That's a, it sounds pretty good. Uh, you wanna, you wanna, you know, pop the hood there? Cause there seems to be some, uh, some smoke. Oh. That's interesting. All right, let's, uh, hopefully time is not a factor. I think, yep, yeah, no, that's fine. That is all right. That's just the WD-40 and all that stuff that we oh, put burning on off. the bolts. Okay, so we just gotta burn that off and then do the suspension. Now we're taking off the wheel and tire in order to get off this lowered suspension. So all we gotta do is, hopefully this comes off. All right, that's not bad. Give her a nice healthy dose of Ugga Dug. That's right. So how, how many, many Ugga Duggas do you think it's gonna take to? Is it Ugga Dugga or is it Daka Daka? In Australia, I've heard Daka Daka. I think it's Ugga Dugga. That sounds like, it, it doesn't sound like an Ugga Dugga. I think Ugga Dugga is air powered. Daka Daka is probably electric, right? Right. Okay. Remember when I said this car is easy to work on? This car is not actually that hard to work on. There is a lot of fit in the It's, it's, it's not, it's not. See one, one Ugga Dugga or Daka Daka if you're Andrew, uh, that should be okay. And that is nowhere near torque spec for these wheels. And we will go over them again, but. Okay, so now that we got this all done, we're gonna do the rest of the car. And when I say we, I mean Andrew because I'm tired. Andrew, d do it. Go. Since Freddie rushed through his side of the car, I'm gonna slow down a little bit and give us a step-by-step -step instruction of how to actually do this. Step one, remove the wheel. Step two, sorry British people, is to remove the ABS wire from the strut. Step three, remove the sway bar inlay. Step four, remove lower strut bolt. Step five, remove strut from hub assembly. That's the easy part. No, don't say that. I can't jinx people, apparently. Nope, you can't. You're powered. <laughs> you have no power here. <laughs> Step six. Remove top strut nuts. Step seven. Remove strut assembly. Oh, you know, just strutting my stuff. Uh, uh, oh God, no. <laughs> to reinstall the strut, simply watch the video in reverse.
And don't forget to torque everything to spec. We are in the home stretch on this build, and I can't wait to see how it looks with everything stock. So we're ripping out these struts. They have the uh, these purple aftermarket springs on them, and it's super easy. It's way easier than the front. All you need is two tools. You just need a 13 mil on a socket, and you also need an 18 mil, but I have it on this zippy gun. So we're just gonna take these off. It's two bolts on the top, one bolt on the bottom. This thing should just slide out of there, and then we'll be done. We can put it on the floor, and Andrew can be super excited about his stock car. There we go. It should come right out. This car is not actually that hard to work on. Okay, and we are, ah, we're out. Okay, wasn't so bad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and remember, installation is reverse or removal and hopefully it should be a little easier than what I just took out. All right, guys, we are done. This thing is looking really good if your standard of looking good as a stock car. But right now we have to start the painstaking process of taking off all this dust and dirt and debris and dead frogs and yeah, leaves and all. We could, or. Dude, first official test drive of your new Mini Cooper S. Well, your stockified one, at least. Stockified, that's a good word. Okay, let's uh, let's start this bad boy up and listen to the rumble. It's pretty good. Purrs like a kitten. You know what I like about this? We can actually have a conversation in this car. Huh? We can actually have a conversation in this car. What? We can actually have a conversation. So I'm really interested in seeing how this thing handles. Now it has all season tires and it does have the stock suspension back on it and it has the exhaust and everything else. It doesn't need to be shouty like it once was. So I wanna, I wanna see how livable this thing is as a daily driver. I'm still gonna put it in sport mode because that's really the only way to drive this car. So sport mode engaged. One thing I really like about this car now is the lack of check engine lights and lack of warning lights in general. It's 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 pretty nice. Isn't it nice? It is really nice. It feels like a complete vehicle once again. And you got nothing going on up there and it, and it's just it, it's just all together. This is uh this is definitely daily driver spec. All right, dude. I want to see what this thing can accelerate like. <laughs> Come on, right into traffic. No? All right, here we go. No. That's not bad, dude. Yeah, she's, she's a... Uh, that's really nice. That's really good. Yeah, it's smooth, it's manageable. So yeah, it's, it's fun, it's just fun. You're not it's gonna win. It's so much fun. You're it's... not gonna win any drag races there, but that's not what this car is about. This car is just about the experience, man. It's so much fun to drive. Even in stock form, I'm having a blast. I, I miss how heavy and weighted the steering is. I miss how responsive and crisp the brakes are. Even in the Focus ST, it has uh, very light steering. The brakes kind of, there's not a lot of feel. Whereas this car, it definitely has a bit more of an analog experience. Oh, definitely. Dude, I mean, I love this big face. <laughs> it's like, this, is, this is awesome, it's so quirky. Everyone always asks me, why is there a giant speedometer in the middle of the dashboard? And I would tell them, it's so that I can scare you when you see how fast we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this car is so much fun. And, it, and the ride quality is, is really good. Yeah, it's taut but smooth. There's plenty of space. I mean, look, look how much, like I'm, I'm completely. Check yeah. this out, I'm six foot four. Look how much headroom I have. <laughs> All right, dude, I think it's time to take this thing back to the shop and finally put it up for sale. No, I don't want it.
let's run some numbers. We started with a car that was worth about $3,500. We spent $250 on a stock exhaust, $200 on suspension, $75 on a diverter valve, and around $100 on miscellaneous stuff. The wheels, tires, and the hood scoop were free, sort of, I already had them in my garage. And the car wash was about $25. Bucks. Based on the current market, this car is now worth between $5,500 and $6,500, giving us an added value of up to $2,300, bucks, and we did the whole thing over a long weekend. That's not bad. The Mini is complete. I can't believe how well this turned out. Now, the point of the series was to show you guys how you can do this on your own, and I had a great time. Well, now that this car is done, it's time to get it out of here and replace it with a new car. But to do that, we need your help. So we've set up a Patreon. The more patrons we get, the more cars and projects we'll have in the future. So please consider donating. And all that stuff will be in the link in the description below. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to this channel because we're not gonna have just Art of the Flip on this channel. We're gonna have other stuff as well. And you're really, really gonna like it. So thank you so much for watching. So can I drive this? Not a chance.